Good morning everybody and welcome to morning prayer for this Tuesday the 28th of April. It's uh, good to be with you. Um, I'm hoping that this uh, new camera is going to give you a better view of me um, but uh, you probably don't really want to see me anyway. Um, it's, uh, it's good to be gathered as we uh, pray together daily for those affected by coronavirus around the world and amongst our own communities, for all those who are struggling at this time and for the wider issues of the world that continue to trouble our people and God's people and the world. So I thank you for being a part of this. If you're following the order of service, do please join in with any of the parts in bold. I'll remain standing throughout, but it's entirely up to you if you wish to stand at certain points. I'll point those out to you. So we begin with our preparation. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The Easter Anthems Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our psalm for today is number 98, Psalm 98. And our refrain from this, the Lord has made known his salvation. You're welcome to join in the even verses. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the voice of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, sound praises before the Lord the King. Let the sea thunder 
and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world, and the peoples with equity. The Lord has made known his salvation. Lord God, just and true, you make your salvation known in the sight of the nations. Tune the song of our hearts to the music of creation, as you come among us to judge the earth, through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Excuse me. <clears throat> Our first reading is taken from Exodus chapter 20. Familiar words for many. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth below, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of their parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You do, shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honour your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbour. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, You speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. For God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. Then the people stood at a distance while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. The Song of Moses and Miriam And join in the refrain with me. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. 
You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. Our second reading is taken from the first book of Luke, chapter, uh, sorry, chapter one of Luke, uh, beginning at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and we will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has, been, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Two quite familiar readings this morning. The first, the famous Ten Commandments, which even if you're not a regular churchgoer or a Christian, you may well know or at least have heard of even if you can't remember them all. And the second, a reading we usually hear around Advent and Christmas time, the story of the Annunciation. It's interesting that these two readings come up in morning prayer. So often morning prayer contains readings that are less familiar, less well known. I wonder if you spotted the line or the phrase that was used in both readings this morning. Moses says to the people when they say, do not allow God to speak to us, for he will surely condemn us or something along those lines. Moses responds with the words, do not be afraid. And in our second reading in Luke, the angel says to Mary, do not be afraid. Words that are there, in fact, throughout our Bible, often said by Jesus, but here said by others, do not be afraid. It's very difficult in times like this when there is so much worry, uncertainty, when we are left with so much time to our own thoughts, our own feelings. It is very difficult not to feel afraid at times. And yet here we are being told by a great prophet of ours and by an angel of God. Do not be afraid. In both cases, God has a bigger plan. God has a bigger idea for us, a bigger story. And I talked a bit about that bigger story on Sunday. But I think our clear message here is not to be afraid, but to trust in God through all of this. Another thing that struck me from this morning's readings was we're suddenly talking about two births, Elizabeth's 
pregnancy um, at six months and Mary who is to become pregnant and have our Lord Jesus. On Sunday I was listening to the radio and listening to Captain Tom Moore who has become one of the biggest celebrities in the last three weeks that we know um, and uh, he was being asked about what brings him joy in these days and he talked about the fact that there are still children being born every day. There is something about the way that life goes on in all of this and that joy is still coming into the world even through all the fear and the suffering and the pain, even through the grief and the tiredness. There is still joy and we need to hold on to that. It's not to negate all the suffering. It is there to sustain us and keep us going. So don't feel guilty about sharing some joy in this time. It is there for us as a gift to us of our Lord to keep us going as we continue in this crisis together. So we continue with our responsory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? You may like to stand for the gospel canticle at this point. We say all of this together. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. So we turn now to a time of intercession prayer. Let us pray. Lord, our God, we are so grateful that your ears are open to us, that you have time and space to listen to us. And we hold ourselves, our hearts and our heartfelt prayers before you now. Lord, we pray for your church at this time. For all those who are seeking to lead a people in prayer and worship in these troubled times. We give you thanks for the gift of faith. For the gift of each other. And the gift of community. We pray for all those who are struggling with their faith today. Whether they be leaders or new Christians, or those who have been in the faith for some time, but are struggling to understand these times for themselves. Lord, help us not to be afraid. 
but to trust in you and to find our hope and our joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world in this time of worldwide pandemic. We pray for those countries where resources are few and they are unable to keep themselves safe in this time of virus. Lord, we pray for all those who are working to help others to keep safe, for the charities and organisations that are in those places. We pray for all those who are suffering and those who are scared for them. Bring them your comfort and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own families and friends this day, Lord, holding them before you. Lord, these are the people you have given us to care for and to care for us. We ask for your protection over them, for your inspiration for them and for your light to shine in their lives. Where there is despair, Lord, bring hope. Bring your light. We pray particularly for those in our families who are unwell at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering today. For all those who are suffering from fear because they do not have enough. We pray for those who will go hungry today. For those who will expose themselves to danger this day. For those who are mourning this day. We pray for those who are ill, whether at home or in hospital. And in a moment of quiet, we hold before you those we know who need our prayers and your love this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who have died in the past few days, for all those who are facing death and for all those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. Lord, bring your comfort to them. Let them know the joy of your loving arms which greets their loved ones and which holds them now. We continue to remember in our prayers Andrew Lynn and Anthony Stretton. May they rest in peace and rise in glory and may your comfort be with all their relatives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a prayer from the Church of England for those who are ill. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain. 
knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our collect prayer for today. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for joining me in morning prayer this morning or at whatever time you are joining in with this. Morning prayer will continue to be streamed on this channel at 8am Monday to Thursday through the coming weeks and our regular Sunday service is broadcast at 10am on Sunday. This Sunday there will be an all-age worship service. So go with God's blessing this morning and may you feel God's presence with you and not be afraid. Amen. <laughs>